Welcome everyone to our uh, colloquium. Today we are today we were initially scheduled to have two speakers. Uh, we had one uh, one of these speakers uh, very fortunately uh, was offered a a, a a slot at a talk and then was offered uh, an opportunity at a job. So in both cases, it meant that they weren't available for today. Um, our speaker is Diana Garcia Silva. She will be presenting uh, on improving uh, statistical skills through storytelling, and we should be aware that we probably won't take the entire the entire allotted time for this talk. Uh, Diana came to Queens College from Queensborough Community College, where she studied environmental health. She earned her bachelor's degree in the School of Earth and Environmental Science, and she's been working with me, uh, collaborating with me over the last two years to uh, to to finish a uh, master's uh, uh, in the School of Earth and Environmental Science. She is focused on geoscience education, uh, which has been her passion since she initially started um, uh, volunteering at Alley Pond Environmental Center over in, over in Bayside. Um, and she's gonna be uh, sharing with us how we can improve uh, quantitative skills or provide pathways for instructors to address quantitative material um, in the course of their, their the, 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 the wide range of areas that we use statistics in the environmental sciences. And with that, um, Diana, the, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction. So I appreciate everyone joining for today. So as Professor Sol talked about for today's colloquium, I will be talking about improving statistical skills through storytelling. And this project was initiated with the hope of helping students understand statistics through relatable stories that piques their interest in what they are learning for. We have seen how difficult it is for some to understand concepts like correlation coefficient, linear regression, and even how to use significant figures as a tool to organize and analyze data to help draw conclusions about them, as well as providing an educational tool for many educators from all levels to help them teach statistics. Uh, first off, I'd also like to give a shout out to everyone that has assisted me in developing these vignettes. Uh, this project was a collaborative effort from everyone involved um, for the perspective on the topics and their feedback really helped in shaping the design of these vignettes as well as the information that are being learned. First off, I want to talk about Project Eddy and their role in statistical vignettes. Project Eddy stands for Environmental Data Driven inquiry and exploration, and it is a community of STEM instructors and educational researchers that developed flexible classroom modules to engage students in STEM and improve their quantitative reasoning skills using large, authentic, publicly available data sets. These teaching modules span a variety of topics such as ecology, geology, hydrology, and environmental sciences. These modules were built upon um, Project Eddy's primary objective of developing flexible standalone module activities for all levels of undergraduate coursework that build quantitative literacy using a framework that transitions students from using highly structured data, um, using highly structured data uh, that are in activities to an almost uh, open inquiry, mo inquiry model for data exploration. So it transitions them from using data and translating that into open discussions on how to uh, process uh, what they have learned. Uh, statistical vignettes were built upon a similar foundation of wanting to improve a student's quantitative reasoning skills through the use and exploration of statistics, which are used in everyday life and, and that are not in, in, in subjects that are not related to science. Uh, the development of statistical, statistical vignettes happened pretty naturally from earlier trials that showed what students had achieved as a result of them learning of learning uh, uh, to, uh, and to, uh, environmental topics uh, through the use of any modules. Uh, these early results from these trials indicated while students are able to perform the statistical task necessary in Excel and had and that they had become more comfortable in manipulating data, they also showed us that many of the students had trouble of understanding the concept of, of understanding the concept themselves. So statistical vignettes were created with the objective of providing the theoretical foundation of the most commonly used statistical techniques 
that we use for data analysis and provide them in a way that was flexible to be used with any topics that include statistics and provide teaching tips to instructors who may not have a formal training with statistical topics. So before we move on, I would like to just show you very briefly where these vignettes, when they're finally developed and where they're housed. So I'm gonna click on this link real quick. So before you, you see the homepage of Project Eddy and the, this website has a, a whole slew of information uh, in teaching materials as well as news and events and what Project Eddy is. I'm gonna click on here real quick, the teaching materials, let me hope it goes. There you go. And it goes to statistical vignettes. And this is where the statistical vignettes are, are located for educators of all, level, of all levels to find them and to be used. Um, uh, so far we have correlation coefficient, significant figures, normal distribution, and linear regression. And that's just briefly what they are, so I'm not gonna go into that. Okay, going back, and I hope you can still see the screen. All right. So you have heard me talk about just briefly what um, about any modules. So let's talk about what they are specifically. Um, and any modules are about a three hour lesson that are that range from a variety of topics like climate change, stream discharge, seismology, water quality, and many others. And these modules are structured with ABC activities that are based on a set of learning objectives and a data set that provides an opportunity for students to explore a scientific concept or environmental problem. The common goal for all modules uh, in Project Eddy is to provide, um, is to improve quantitative reasoning uh, skills and, and skills associated with data manipulation and visualization. As an example, the climate change module, uh, which is incorporated into the climate change lab for S99, which many of uh, those who are TAs may have seen in the climate change lab, have students examine ice core data and determine rates for air temperature and CO2 concentrations from our data sets. Uh, the manipulation of the data allows students to explore whether temperature and CO2 concentrations are related as seen by the graph here. Then the module continues forth by comparing the current rates to prehistorical rates of change using data from the ice core to investigate how climate has changed from the past to modern times. Uh, like the AB activities for the climate change module, uh, each module has a flexible ABC structure, where part A focuses on student engagement through data exploration. Part B is where students explore, explain the data through a more detailed analysis and allows them to discuss what analysis they think are appropriate for the data and explain what the results indicate as well as any interpretations they may have on the data. Lastly, in part C, students evaluate their learning through guided, discussion, through guided discussions and answering questions in either a think-pair-share group kind of you know, like with a partner and do a think-pair-share activity or they could do answer these questions as an individual. Each any module thus provides many opportunities for students to practice the individualization skills and evidence-based reasoning and discussions of how the manipulation of data affects the way uh, they detect change. Okay, now let's talk about what, what a statistical vignette is. First off, let me introduce Rita, who was our first character created for this project. Uh, in this slide, Rita has just, just opened up an ice cream shop and is tracking temperature changes over time and she wants to know if temperature affects ice cream sales. Statistical vignettes are focused on developing quantitative concepts that are commonly used in the analysis. They are intended to help students address uh, statistical misconceptions and improve their quantitative reasoning skills. Each vignette is about a 15 to 20 minute introductory lesson on a specific statistical topic that consists of brief lectures, supporting materials, and an engaging storyline with diverse characters to help guide students and teachers through the relevant uh, theoretical background on the concept. And they are intended for structures to use as either a standalone teaching material that can be taught on its own, applied to any lesson that covers statistics, or in, can be used in conjunction with an any module. 
the storyline within each of these vignettes are to think are disengaged from any specific module in order to allow for, for them to be used in a flexible manner um, and in a flexible manner to be used for any type of les a lesson that covers statistics. Um, so an integral, an integral part of these vignettes is looking at how a statistical concept is used in data. Significant figures has been reported as one of the most challenging concepts for students because they do not understand why they are used and report too many figures when they see a lot of digits in their calculation. Uh, that is why the significant figures we get focuses on teaching students the importance of providing concise quantitative answers for measured value. As students go through the lesson, they will learn how to determine the number of significant figures in a given measurement uh, using the information they have learned such as the general, the general rules for significant figures. Um, and express uh, the results uh, for the calculation using the correct number of significant figures that they have learned from the lesson. Uh, to help generalize the concept um, that's easy for students to learn, the vignette is guided by diverse characters guided by diverse characters such as Oliver and Alex who you see before you to help connect what the students have learned throughout the vignette to a statement, statement problem in the story. Um, in this illustration, Oliver and Alex wants to know how much salt uh, is needed to be added to a pool of water for the submarine robot to float. Um, after taking the initial uh, dimensions of the pool and calculating the amount of salt needed, uh, they had calculated a mass total of 2,523.5 grams. However, that value was too precise. So then they go in the thought process of thinking, what statistical concept do they need to utilize to make that value more precise? And that leads them to significant figures. So when they use significant figures, it helps yield a more concise answer for the final measurement of 2,500 grams, which has two significant figures. Basically, uh, vignettes are designed to help educators address uh, common student misconceptions of quantitative concepts and provide a primary topics where their own confidence levels for both instructors and students can be improved. Each vignette uh, focuses on describing a specific quantitative concept with supporting character like Oliver and Alex, as well as Rita, who you see before you, to help guide them through the lesson. I would like to point out um, that each of these lessons contains the information that are important for students to learn, but also uh, contains the information that are needed for an instructor to understand and teach the topic uh, effectively and comfortably, and thus also increase student comfort when they learn the quantitative concept. Cognitively, uh, these vignettes will also help students engage in the elaboration or the process of clarifying the relationship between what the students already know, so any prior knowledge they have about this uh, concept, like significant figures maybe, and what is being learned in the vignette. And this helps form a type of uh, scaffolding which, uh, between what the students already know and what they already learned to help um, build upon the rest of the lesson. So to clarify, the main difference between a module and a vignette is that modules are a three-hour lesson plan that covers topics such as climate change and seismology to improve a student's quality of reasoning and problem-solving skills. The modules can be taught on their own with an ABC structure, as we, as we had discussed. On the other hand, statistical vignettes are shorter in duration and can be taught between 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, vignettes focus on specific statistical concepts that have been troubling for students to master. Um, and in order to assist in overcoming that difficulty, each vignette is designed with fun and diverse characters that are relatable to students and provide an engaging and visual storyline to entice students to participate. Vignettes can also be used as a supporting material within any module or be taught as a standalone lesson. Uh, now that we have looked at the difference between what a module and statistical vignettes are, 
let's look at how a statistical baguette can be used in conjunction with an editing module. Uh, the module that we've been looking at is the climate change module. Um, there is activity that students uh, ask for to see how temperature and atmospheric CO2 are changing over time. And in order to assist them in the activity that asks them to find R square and describe their, their analysis between the two variables uh, from the activity question, they can review the vignette uh, for linear regression to look at Rita's example of learning linear regression to help explain the relationship between temperature and time and temperature and CO2 concentrations. And this, and going forth uh, for the next slide, um, I will show you the design path for the creation of these vignettes. Okay, so the first step when designing statistical vignette is selecting a statistical concept that has been difficult for student understanding and are commonly used in the analysis. The second step involved outlining uh, introductory information on the concept, and this information had ranged from more of the topic important, background information like definition, uh, mnemonic devices, and practice slides to demonstrate what a student had learned. The third step was to come up with story ideas that not only conveyed the statistical concept that, that was being developed, but also are, um, but, all, but was also relatable to the general audience. The fourth step was one of the hardest, uh, which was to choose an approachable and diverse character that was not that was not offensive in any manner to the general audience. The fifth step had joined step three and four by incorporating the character, the character story and the use of statistics through a storyboard outline before finalizing the vignette design. And then lastly, step six was to have a statistician uh, vet the statistical information in the vignette before it was finalized and put up on the, uh, before it's publicly available. So the way we came up with our initial list of statistical vignettes to be developed was through community engagement. Uh, the TOOS project was a development workshop um, where educators had explored ways to improve student quantitative reasoning skills um, after many discussions on the concepts uh, that, that were difficult for students to understand, uh, they were able to decide on correlation coefficient and the linear regression um, topic as the starting point for vignette development. And then the quantitative reasoning workshop that had occurred in 2019, uh, June 2019, helped in solidifying the overall design uh, for the correlation coefficient and linear regression vignette. This workshop, uh, this workshop included a community of educators from all levels um, that helped determine uh, the next series of vignettes to be developed, which will be mean, medium, and mode, uh, normal distribution, and significant figures. Uh, then they helped uh, create the following series, will be, which will be focused on topics that are um, imperative to uh, the, uh, create topics that are uh, imperative to, to traditional time series analysis, such as frequency, wavelength, and aliasing. So during, during the design process, choosing character, which I, I briefly mentioned, was one of the hardest aspects. Uh, the first outlines of a character are created by an illustrator and her students. And then based on student feedback, the characters are revised and finalized for use in these vignettes. Each character had been surveyed by students to ensure they're relatable to a broad range of student backgrounds and were not offensive in any manner. Uh, so just, so just stereotyping uh, certain groups of people. Uh, for we want to develop diverse characters that embody inclusivity in the STEM field. Uh, for we wanted uh, to represent minority students, and we hope that each character can connect the students on a personal level and inspire them to pursue a path in STEM. Uh, this, um, the survey that was used uh, to uh, figure out the overall, um, how students relate to the characters was through Qualtrics, um, to the college students. 
uh, the questions ask about the character's appearance, their name, and if they're relatable or offensive, and if they had any suggestions for future improvement on the characters. This vetting process helped to ensure inclusivity with diverse students, like the LGBT community, African Americans, Indigenous, and other people of color who are not often well represented in the STEM fields. Uh, part of the survey also collected student demographic information. Uh, based on the graph, perhaps not surprisingly, uh, the majority of the responses were white racial groups. Uh, but because we collected this data through several cultural houses, um, which are other forms of communication surveys to help reach a broader range of racial backgrounds, we were able to get a significant portion of our respondents across a wide range of ethnic backgrounds, which enabled us to weigh in the responses according to their ethnicity. <clears throat> um, from the survey, if a respondent had indicated um, in the survey that they were offended by a Native American character or an African American character that was developed, it would have meant more to us when finalizing the, de the development of the character than the white racial groups or any other racial group, any other racial group that did not have a familiarity with that specific character that was um, developed in their background and so forth. Uh, these results helped us to view uh, the racial identity among the survey takers and to utilize their views on the character to limit the initial bias that may have been present when the characters were developed, or we want to make sure the characters didn't promote any stereotypes unknowingly to us. So here is an example of the responses received for a character that was developed before they're finalized in the use of in to be used in statistical vignettes. Um, before you, we have Alex, who was inspired by Alexander von Humboldt, who was a naturalist, explorer, and a geographer that laid the groundwork for modern geology, and he was also a member of the LGBTQ community. When the survey takers responded on what they had thought of Alex as a character, and if they had felt offended by him, the vast majority of the responses had replied no. Uh, but for those who indicated that they felt offended by any aspects of Alex, such as his name, appearance, or his ability to be relatable to the student, then we, speed, we paid special attention to those who did not like Alex. Here we have Fashima, who was inspired by Fashima Al-Fahari, who had created the first known universally located in Morocco over a thousand years ago. Uh, the results uh, from the survey uh, showed that a majority of the students found that Fashima was not offensive by name or appearance. However, they had indicated that she was slightly um, relatable to them. So similarly to Alex, we had paid special attention to the feedback that found Fashima not relatable and revived the character from their comments. Uh, so Before You is one of my favorite characters. Her name is May, and she was inspired by May Jemerson, who was an engineer, physician, and a NASA astronaut. Um, she had also had become the first Black woman to travel into space. Uh, the feedback and poll from the survey showed a high regard um, to her being relatable to the survey takers. However, her overall appearance was seen as offensive to a portion of the students and was thus taken into consideration for character improvement based on those feedbacks. Uh, lastly, we have Ralph Braun, uh, who was an engineer with muscular dystrophy uh, who, and who was also a pioneer in the disability inclusion movement by, in, by inventing the first wheelchair lift and Barry Paris scooter. In comparison to the rest of the characters that were developed, Ralph had failed our survey for Ralph had a slightly higher amount of respondents that found him offensive and not relatable compared to the rest of the characters because people in wheelchairs had indicated that they did not think his overall depiction was a good representation for someone who was in a wheelchair. Overall, they did not find Ralph offensive himself, 
but the wheelchair for the wheelchair was not an accurate representation that was used in everyday life for someone with a physical disability. And based on those feedback, Ralph is still in the process of being modified. Overall, characters uh, were approved if there are no responses, stating that the character was offensive in any manner. <clears throat> However, if feedback was received, saying that the character was offensive, then the feedback was reviewed and appropriate changes were made to the character. Now, here is the entire cast of characters that were the result from student input. The names of, the, of these characters were inspired by real life individuals with interesting stories and backgrounds and who, was, who were of minority backgrounds that has contributed to science or education in STEM. Before you, we have Rita on the far left, who is a depiction of the artist who created her, Michelle uh, Wirthmuller, and following her is Fashima Afahari, Oliver Heaviside, May Jemerson, Alexander von Humboldt, Robin Wall-Kimmerer, Aki Karos, and lastly, Ralph Braun. <clears throat> uh, now let us go uh, through the rest of the guests that are completed and are available for public use, starting with correlation coefficient. Uh, this was the first finget that was created by Project Eddy. Uh, the main concept for this finget is to learn how to quantify and describe a relationship between two variables of interest, which is a common analytical scale used in data analysis. <clears throat> Objectives for this thing get includes one, investigating the relationship between two data sets and quantifying the extent to which they vary together, <clears throat> and two, uh, determine when the correlation coefficient is and not a useful measure for quantifying data. Uh, Rita helps guide students through this thing get and helps them understand that at the end, correlation does not prove causation. Uh, following is the linear regression thing get, which is a continuation of correlation coefficient, where the main concept is to create, uh, uh, to create model predictions from a line of best fit within the graph. Uh, objectives for this thing get include demonstrating the ability to identify the independent and dependent variables investigating the relationship between two data sets and to, to predict future values and recognize that not all data that not all data relationships can be described using the correlation coefficient. The illustration before you shows linear regression model with temperature on the x-axis and sales of ice cream on the y-axis. The model shows that as temperature increases, it can cause more people to crave ice cream during hot weather. The R2 value between sales and temperature is 0.64, which can be equated as 64% of the sales, <clears throat> which can be equated as 64% of the sales that can be explained by increased temperature, or it can be thought that ice cream sales are 64% dependent on temperature. Lastly, we have the normal distribution finget. Uh, this finget allows students to learn how to make predictions for a set of measurements and what components are necessary to create a distribution graph. Uh, these components include standard deviation and the mean, which students will learn throughout the finget. Uh, the objectives that led to the development of this finget included describing the elements uh, for a normal distribution. Uh, recognizing that the normal probability distribution and apply appropriately. Uh, then the students uh, demonstrate at the end the use of probability distribution through an activity at the end of the vignette. Um, at the end of this vignette, uh, Robin gathers, uh, students will see that Robin gathers her data to create a histogram. Um, and then she finds that there is a 68% chance of being five minutes early or five minutes late. For, for pizza delivery time, and then the average time is 30, is 30 minutes. Uh, so finally, the question is, do vignettes work? Um, as we discussed, uh, we learned that the any modules themselves 
helped to improve student reasoning skills when analyzing large sets of data and that they had become more comfortable exploring and manipulating large frequency data in Excel. Acknowledging that any modules improved a student's ability to analyze large data sets, the correlation coefficient and linear regression being guessed were then tested in conjunction with the climate change any module in the fall 2019 semester, in the, in the fall 2019 semester here at Queens College. Um, the data we received from this test is quite large, and so the investigation on the quality of data is still pending. Um, the, data, the data is still pending for the test involved over 200, stu 200 students from two institutions that participated in our pre and post test questionnaire that ask students to, to define uh, correlation coefficient and linear regression, uh, describe the relationship between two variables, and explain how they knew the relationship was strong or weak, uh, which provided overall, um, which provided over 400 pairs of pre and post test responses. And because of the magnitude of the data that we had received and the variety of trials that had been conducted, from our pre and post tests, we are in the process of testing and trying to understand the impact that being guests have for the students. And it's an early product and we have results that we are working towards. So I will not claim any definite results, results at this point. But we do have quant qualitative data. Um, and the students, uh, for the students' responses that we received shows that students shows that students gain a better understanding of the statistical concept. However, they had trouble expressing their statistical knowledge through the, through the use of poor, poor statistical vocabulary when compared to the model answer that was created as our rubric answer. Um, as an example, question 24, uh, which you see on the far uh, right, um, ask students to make an estimate of the correlation coefficient of the two graphs. When they look at the graphs, they have to make an estimate based on the information that they that are provided, which are that the, that the graphs are missing their axis titles, that they both follow a positive linear direction, and that CC1 has data points that are more closer together than CC2, indicating a stronger relationship and a higher correlation, correlation coefficient uh, value than CC2. The, um, the written responses that answered this question uh, while looking at the data shows that the, that the responses were short, had, had minimal detail, and contained a few um, key statistical words that were learned throughout the vignette and also pointed out the misconceptions that they had on the topic or that they provided a non-informative um, approach type answer. Um, such as describing uh, that CC2 has a positive correlation and a higher one, or that the left graph has a stronger correlation than the right graph. Uh, these type of responses that we, that we received from the students are useful in pinpointing what students understand about the topic, the type of information they understood, uh, what they had trouble learning based on what they had trouble learning, and the misconceptions that they had, which helps translate into future vignette development and addressing the development of uh, students themselves uh, towards understanding, understanding statistics as a tool for analyzing data particularly the vocabulary uh, necessary to describe statistical topics. And it, it will be a while longer before these results are, pu are publishable. Uh, so what's gonna happen in the future? Uh, future work includes the analysis of the data from our pre and post test questionnaire that was conducted in the fall 2019 semester and the continued work on the development of statistical vignettes. Uh, currently, the mean, medium, and mode vignette is near completion with the vignette and the vetting process and the vetting process before it is available for public use. Uh, future, future vignette 
includes a series on statistical significance with a focus on hypothesis testing, uh, confidence, confidence intervals, and outliers. In a time series, big gets with discussions focusing on wavelength, frequency, and aliasing. And that is all. Thank you, everyone. Are there any questions that I will take? That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, I think we can use the uh, the chat window, or you're all all free to. Uh, turn on your uh, microphones and chime in if you like. Mm -hmm. And thank you everyone for letting me drink my water. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, thank you, Max. All right, we got we got, hi, we, got several, we got several thank yous in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I just wanted to chime in. Um, first of all, I just want to say, yeah, these are some really awesome tools. Um, that I like the statistical vignettes and those Eddy modules. Um, I definitely want to explore them further and see how I can use them in my teaching. Um, I was curious with your statistical vignettes. Um, I know you. I think you showed us like four different. Um, types that you've developed so far. Um, do you have plans to make um, like additional ones? Like what other topics would you? Yeah, uh, so our next series is gonna, um, one that's currently in the vetting process is mean, medium, and mode. And that uh, may get is helps teach students on how to use central tendency to make graphs as well as including outliers. So they could help understand that when you have outliers or no outliers for central tendency, what does the pattern, the overall pattern of the of the distribution looks like? Yeah, Diana, uh, I, I, if, if I recall correctly, I think you have a slide that shows oh, yeah. uh, completed, pending, and, uh, and long term. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, last graph. So the mean, median, mode, and get. Um, and then our next series will focus on statistical significance, which includes hypothesis testing, uh, confidence intervals, and outliers. And then following that will be a time series analysis uh, series, which will include wavelength, frequency, and aliasing as those topics. And many more to come, but those will be in discussions, uh, future discussions after we have completed these. Cool, awesome. Yeah, th these sound great. Like I, I want them for myself too, like just to help me learn statistics. <laughs> yeah, Um. also like, all those vignettes, when they're uh, completed and finalized, they will be put up on the EDI website, which is uh, publicly available for all educators to use, so from all levels. So whether you're a TA or um, an intermediate instructor or any type of level, uh, they could use these vignettes to be used in the classroom for any topic that covers statistics. So if, you have, if you're like focusing on climate change or seismology and you have a statistical concept that are utilized in there, like significant figures, or you're going to do linear regression, you could incorporate a vignette on that topic in, the, in the, your course or that lesson in particular. Uh, and Lisa, I think if I can chime in, I think that, the, that what, you just, what you just said is, is to a certain extent the point. One of the reasons that we think that uh, we you know, that students don't finish their careers with solid understanding of statistical concepts is because largely um, the, the instructor population, uh, you know, mo most of us, I've never actually taken a statistical class, right? And, and so instructors have a tendency to not focus on things that they're not particularly confident in. So what these, what these vignettes are hopefully provide a resource for is a structured, vetted, uh, walk through the, the, uh, the theoretical background that uh, underlies uh, the statistics that they use because we, you know, every class that we have produces a, you know, the, a regression line is a very regular thing that, 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 that students often will turn in and, and can't really explain. Um, so we uh, both provide the, the structured lesson plan through that theoretical topic. But then because we vetted these and we've, we're testing these with students, we are collecting, systematically collecting their common mis, misconceptions, misperceptions, 
um, and including those as part of the instructor note packet. So, so an instructor who's trying to, to talk about regression can understand that a that a that a that it is very common for a student to conflate regression with a negative slope, right? Or or um, uh, you know any any number of any number of very prevalent you know if you get 400 student answers you get you get an opportunity to see well, where did they not understand what you said right and uh by making that making that clear i think hopefully we can improve things for a lot of students in a lot of classes diana i asked you, you said that when you when you field test to see the how relatable or offensive any of these characters were uh, and you you said that there were people who you know, you're looking at 70% uh, saying, yeah, that's okay. But 30% are saying I have some issue one way or another. Can you give us an example of the way in which you change the characters to try to make them more appealable? Yeah, so I have experience with Ralph. So compared to the other characters, so and first off, initially when they presented these characters that were developed, uh, a survey sent out to the students saying like, okay, what do you, what are your opinion on him as a on on them as a character? Do you like their name, their overall appearance, or how do you feel relatable to them? And if a student had indicated at any form uh, that they felt offended by the character, um, then those comments were taken into consideration, reviewed and, and reviewed and commented upon, and then those changes were made to the character to make sure they were relatable to that to that general audience. And it was. I would also like to point out that if the audience uh, responded like he responded to a character that was like Hispanic, so if a Hispanic student commented on the Hispanic character, it would have meant more to us because we have that perspective. <laughs> we have that perspective on the cultural aspects for they were relatable, and we could put more emphasis on the character that's developed to represent that to represent that culture or that racial background. And then when they were finalized, again, they will be those that character will be sent back out and reviewed again until we are comfortable that they are well represented for that for uh, the whole general audience. Thank you. Diana, Thank you. just uh, just uh, just as a follow up, what what is the plan change for Ralph? He was one that 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 that, that, that raised a red flag of sorts or or we were that we learned upon presentation didn't didn't quite work for everyone what's the plan change for ralph well ralph is still being modified at uh, for the time being for um for a slightly higher respondents found him not relatable because uh, not for ralph, ralph himself but for the wheelchair aspect so from my understanding those he's still being modified based on the feedback we received by ralph and then once those feedback is taken in and we uh, apply the appropriate changes for Ralph, then we will send them back out and the, the his his character itself to the students and ask what are your what are your new initial take on him before they're finalized. So he is still being in the process of being modified before Diana, completed. Do the respondents indicate what it is they don't what it is they're unhappy with. For example, should this be a motorized wheelchair rather than this kind of wheelchair? Do you have that kind of information or you only yeah. know that they don't like something about it? No. So when we, so when the survey is taken out, we receive their comments or so like any indications so they could describe what they do not like about uh, Ralph in particular. A majority um, respondent has said that the wheelchair does not look real. It looks like a hospital wheelchair instead of a wheelchair that is used in everyday use. And okay. I can I can attest to that personally because um, as a person with physical disability, I've also been in wheelchair, and wheelchairs usually have a handle on the side, or the wheelchair the bigger wheels are more closer to the arms to you to it allow us to have an independent movement for ourselves, right. so we can move ourselves without having assistance, and that's um, that's particularly the reason why. So the wheelchair is not realistic it, as the wheelchair that's used in everyday use. So the wheelchair is going to be modified to make it look more realistic for the character. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other questions that anybody would like to, to, to ask? 
if that's the case, then certainly join me.